Hi, this is Ed in San Diego, and our special guest today will be joining us in just a few minutes. Monica is her name, and she's from the Toronto, Ontario area. Monica Navascus is a global human resources leader, strategic business partner of talent and workplace culture and change, organizational design, development, diversity, and inclusion. So, Monica and I have known each other a few years. She was a guest speaker at our fabulous Toronto meeting um, held and hosted by uh, the bank BMO. And that was, of course, pre-COVID. Pre and uh, we had a full house <laughs> in that top floor uh, creative center. Uh, it was a wonderful time. And uh, we've stayed in touch. And so now Monica is... Uh, with a company called Avenade, which is a tech company. And she's going to tell us about uh, her experiences and we'll be right back. Thank you. And we're back. Uh, I'm Ed in San Diego and in the Toronto, Ontario area is, is Monica Nevescu. Did I pronounce that right? Nevesquez, really. <laughs> no, no, it's it. I stand corrected. Welcome. Thank you for being on Global TV Talk Show. So you're a global talent leader, global HR, with a company um, called Avenade. Avenade is a tech company, right? Yes. Um, I just finished with Avenade a contract uh, for around 13 months. Uh -huh. It was a great learning experience for me just to validate my uh, global exposure in a technology company. I spent six years with Equifax, which is really a technology company. Uh, Equifax probably says it's data powered by technology. Now, a lot of people in the market does not recognize Equifax, Equifax as a technology company. So I was very strategic into uh, choosing a contract that will allow me to position my transferable skills into the technology um, area. As technology companies was growing, were growing, right, before COVID, um, nowadays, unfortunately, we hear about many tech companies doing layoffs. Mm. So that's just um, a sample of how the world is turning and changing so much. Still, technology is very prevalent in our, um, in our world and many, many companies in the technology area that are coming with new innovations are uh, prepared for growth and things like artificial intelligence that we hear right now, it's full on and those companies are requiring talent. And that's where um, they require the best talent teams and HR teams to come along to help them with their business uh, strategy along with a people strategy to help them become successful, right? Yeah, so uh, th this is what you're looking for now? Yes, it's how do we, you know, compare the business strategy and convert it into a people's plan is uh, the critical value that the HR teams bring to the table. HR is a strategic player. HR is not the ones that just do the payroll and organize the benefits for the employees, right? more and more the demands of our businesses are for us to become business partner, speak the language of the business, understand our metrics, understand how do we make our revenue and how do we help the company's growth. As you can imagine, companies' key component is really their talent. And that's what makes the difference in any organization that wants to become successful. Now, talent is not an easy commodity, right? Sometimes we don't have enough of that talent or even capabilities. Uh, we can have people. How do we really develop those capabilities of the future in a world that is ever-changing and evolving is a key challenge for us to solve, right? Many, many years ago, we used to have maybe our parents or grandparents working 30 years in an organization and building their careers within that company. Nowadays, you know, turnover is so, so big um, that we are in constant requirement to acquire new talent, but also understand that the capabilities that we require are ever changing. The skills that we require before 
um, are no longer the skills that we require now. And we have a lot of research and studies that says that our world has just become more and more complex. Having those abilities to be successful in this DNH and are, um, are, are really uh, critical factors and, and, and they have been changed, right? Just as an example. So, mm -hmm. What I wanna say is that HR is in the middle. Uh, they have to, HR has to um, interpret what the C-suite wants and is uh, listening and engaging with the people. And so HR is right in the middle. And uh, for, as I see it, uh, and I'm just on the outside, I'm not in HR at all. I'm in PR and marketing, uh, mm -hmm. which is sort of what HR is becoming too, by the way, <laughs> because they have to express themselves and communicate both ways. And it's different yeah. audiences, like who's the customer? So in HR, your customer is to engage uh, with the employees and to engage with and interpret what C-suite wants. And so you're on offense and you're on defense at the same time. That is true. Uh, so we have to have a balanced approach, right? The workforce has become more and more uh, demanding, I'm going to say. The mm -hmm. expectations of the workforce nowadays are different. It's just no longer to have a good paycheck is how do I feel about working with a company that is a good citizen, for example, a company that does right. good for the world, for the community. Right, right. I, I call it well, well-being in the, not just the workplaces, remote or in office, but at home and in the community, well-being. And that's it's exactly, I think, what you, you're talking about. Correct. And and the part of the well-being happens because there needs to be an alignment between the values of the organization and, and, and the values of the individuals that work there, right? And when you feel that you have more than just a job, but it's part of your purpose, you're contributing to the greater good, right? And, and through your job, you're feeling fulfilled. It's, again, Nowadays, it's not just about the paycheck. It's about how am I aligned and how do I feel that I belong to this organization? Can I feel that I work um, in a collaborative environment? The culture is one culture that is aligned with my own values and where I can feel um, recognized for who I am in my uniqueness as well, right? So um, the demands of our workforce are very much um, changing and therefore companies have to be um, really wide open as to how do we really provide that best employee experience to our employees so they want to come and work with us but also stay with us and stay engaged which is another different thing right a lot of employees and as the markets go up and down, um, a lot of employees sometimes are staying just because they need a paycheck, but are they performing at their best of their abilities or not is one of those critical factors. And many of the research uh, that is done by companies like Gallup and others said that, no, some of our employees are not that engaged. Therefore, you can convert into dollars how much money companies might be wasting because their employees don't have their full heart into their jobs. Yeah. So this has to, a lot to do with communications, especially with remote workers. Hmm. And so uh, what, what do you want to talk about with regard to remote versus in office and yeah. engagement? Yeah, that's a great question, Edwin. I do believe in remote work, but I do believe also that we should not take the culture for granted. And a lot of companies have to uh, be thoughtful about how do I create and maintain the culture that I want in a remote or hybrid setting, right? So what happened was that we were forced to become remote and a lot of companies decided to stay remote or, or, or remain hybrid. 
And that is great in, in many senses for, for, for many good things um, and employees appreciate that. Now, what's happening with a culture, right? So a lot of companies have now to rethink about in this new setting, either remote or hybrid, how do I create or maintain the culture that I want, right? One of the key aspects that we think about is um, the, the sense of belonging. How do I keep the sense of belonging when I'm fully remote, for example, or I have a hybrid workplace? So we have to be purposeful in terms of this is what I want to create and this is what I want to do. So we have to rethink about when do I bring people together, how many times a year, what kind of events, and what kind of relationships I need to create even when I'm fully remote or I'm in a hybrid workplace. Um, we're humans and the human aspect of the relationship remains, right? Uh, we have to assume that trust and good communication both ways would not just happen because, but you have to be purposefully creating those programs to maintain that great communication, create space for innovation and create that sense of belonging within uh, your workforce. This is so clear and I really appreciate your guidance on this. Your voice is really important to me and to my audience because there's a lot of confusion and there's a lot of uncertainty in the minds of so many people right now. Wouldn't you say yeah. so? I think so. It's And it's about, you, you mentioned it before, it's about balance, right? It's about balance. And it's about understanding that the change is here and how do you manage that change is a critical factor. Um, and also it's about understanding that the role of HR is here to support leaders and managers make the best decisions and bridge the communication between the employees and the leaders of the, of the organization to find the best solution and the best, the best way forward. Right. I, I think the speed of change is so huge right now that we might be in, in, in confusion mode. I don't know what to do mode or you do it all HR mode as sometimes um, we have to come to the table and have deep down conversations about what's, what is the best way forward. Yeah. So what about this idea of transformation. Now, this this could be like me. I'm transforming myself from uh, one segment of business to another. And you help organizations make a transformation somehow, right? With workplace, workforce diversity and inclusion. Yes. So the word transform means it's a way of change that there's no way back, right? Once you transform, there's no way back. It's not That's a temporary a change. It's, it's not a, a little thing that you've done. Um, and so what happened is with COVID, we were forced to change. Now, some companies change but did not transform because they went backwards. They went back to the office they they went back to old ways instead of transforming themselves and then embracing a hybrid workplace and and installing new programs new processes new events to make the new reality work the hybrid work uh work for everybody so being purposeful about what is it that you want to transform and why is a critical factor so it's it's not just changing for changing is why, right? And what's in it for me as an organization and what's in it for our employees and our workforce? Um, and how is this transformation and change aligned with the future vision of that company so we can be sure that this is a sustainable change? And it's, it's, it's for the, for, again, for the greater good, as I like to say. Let's talk about people who have talent and they live in, say, Ukraine or Poland, mm. okay? Um, and they 
are uh, maybe stuck there, uh, but they want to work for a Canadian company. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I have, you know, I know that you have some insight and experience on that. If you could, and our, some of our audience is in that same position right now. And so if, if you could address that to provide some guidance or some insight to our global talent audience, that would be great. And I love that because um, transferable skills and global talent is one of my passions. Um, talent is talent, regardless of wherever you are in the world. And we are in a very interconnected work uh, world right now. Uh, still, we have some great talent in Canada. Uh, Canada is a country of immigrants, and we're very proud of bringing part of the best and brightest talent around the world here. So, um, but what happens is that still, as I hear from many of my colleagues in the workplace, um, a lot of talent from other countries still face bias and it's very challenging for them to find their first job in Canada. And the key uh, excuse or comment is, do you have Canadian experience? Right? And, <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> uh, exactly. And, right. and they're newcomers. Um, I was just recently mentoring three uh, fantastic, uh, young, talented um, um, females from Ukraine, precisely, looking for their first jobs in Canada. And, you know, they are into digital marketing and, 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 and publishing industries and whatnot. And, th and so they're very well trained. They're very well trained. Their English is very good, right? It's just they need someone to believe that their transferable skills are going to work here. And a lot of companies have these bias or recruiters have these bias about the Canadian experience. And the Canadian experience is about do you understand and embrace the Canadian values? Are you going to work in a collaborative environment? Are you going to be respectful of diversity? Are you going to be inclusive enough, right? And a lot of these individuals check all those areas, right? So my encouragement to the newcomers to Canada is uh, keep trying and highlight your fantastic transferable skills. You are talented and we need that talent in Canada. So uh, don't be discouraged. And to the recruiters and the hiring managers is give them a chance, right? Uh, take the risk. You will never regret it. Uh, these people are highly engaged and highly motivated to make a living and to make a life out of Canada. They embrace Canada right away after a new home and, um, and, 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 and they deserve a chance, right? So um, let's be open. And for those in, in countries or the ones that stay in Ukraine, uh, my heart is with them and I really wish them the best. Uh, we are in a very volatile world. Um, we have to remain optimistic and, and be kind to one another, right? It's, it's I, I always spread the kindness message because we are all humans and we all want the same. We want to, you know, have a good life, be happy, have a purpose, make a good impact. And, and we can do that if we help each other out and see each other as part of the human race and not as part of one a particular country or race or anything like that, right? As we come to a close of this global TV talk show, I want to invite you to work with me and find others who would like to come on this program mm -hmm. and talk with you and me in a conversation about this very topic. And using this program, to introduce themselves to the global business talent community. More than happy to do that, Edwin. Um, uh, I, I am a true believer on paying it forward as always. And um, let's help one another be successful. And if you can help a new Canadian, uh, please do so. And I'm more than happy to do some introductions as well for people already looking for their next opportunity here in Canada. 
And I'm going to be producing a live conference in London on May 9 and in Holland on May 11. And it's the first live events I've been able to do in three years. Mm -hmm. And so uh, my current thinking is to produce an event live and virtual combination in Canada. Um, in both Montreal and in Toronto. And I would like you to consider being involved on the same topic and enlarging the scope of our audience, of course, welcoming people from abroad who'd like to zoom in, mm -hmm. as well as local people. And let's have a, a coffee meeting. Mm -hmm. And this way, it's a recording. Mm -hmm. We can give the zoom recording back to those people and i will circulate it through our global audience also and perhaps you could too and then all of a sudden it's a public relations bonanza awesome sounds As great a, so let's be in touch thank you monica for being on a global tv talk show why don't you announce what your website is or how people can reach you so uh, people can reach me through LinkedIn, uh, Monica Navasquez. Um, I am a certified coach and I'm doing HR consulting right now for some great companies. So happy to help you in any way um, and uh, look forward to connecting with your great audience and uh, remain in touch with you, Edwin. Thank you very much. Take care and be well, be safe and Thank see you, you again on Global TV Talk Show. Same to you and spread kindness, please. Love it. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.